video is going to be a bit different and it's going to be about presenting sheet music, taping sheet music for an audition or for a class at college or anything like that. Um, it seems like quite a trivial thing to be making a YouTube video about but the amount of students that I come across and even professional singers that are scared of putting some music together for an audition. Um, I'm not going to be talking about how to cut sheet music in this video, that's going to be a separate one. Um, this is basically just going to be about some of the best folders to use to present your music when you're at college um, studying specifically musical theatre. So it's going to be focusing on putting your sheet music together in the most MD friendly way or pianist friendly way so that um, you're always presenting your music at its very best to ensure that it's easy to play basically. I know a lot of colleges on a lot of musical theatre courses where um, teachers and MDs and pianists will refuse to play music unless it's either taped or put in some sort of folder. Everybody has a different preference. Everybody knows what they want and what they like and what they prefer. If you're a student that wants to go to drama school, for example, I always say take two copies of your music. I always say take one that's taped and one that's in a folder just so that you can have the preference. Um, most people won't be as pernickety as that, but you'll get the odd person that'll prefer it in one format or the other. I've worked at a lot of colleges that like different things. Um, I've seen a lot of different types of folders and ways of presenting sheet music from students. But the one thing that um, a lot of people really don't like to do or find it too fiddly or difficult to do for some reason is the actual sellotaping of the music um, so that it's all concertinaed in a line. So I've got three different types of folders um, that I want to just go through, which I've come across in lots of different drama schools and auditions and stuff like that. They work really, really well. So number one, a drama school favourite, is the plain black presentation folder. So they're really good for concerts and things like that because they're black, so they look quite smart. And you can get soft covers or hard covers. Amazon's probably the best place to get them for a really good price. Comes with loads of plastic wallets. You can get them in like 20 plastic wallets or 25, 50, 100, anything like that. Um, you, the 100 ones are actually really big and sometimes you find that the music fits in but it's not really playable so I'd just be careful about that. Um, if you're a drama school student doing musical theatre you're often going to have quite a big rep folder. I'd say have two folders. I'd say one have a big one to keep all your backlog of music and then have like one that you're currently using with like a rep that you sing in right now. It just makes a lot of sense because if you go into a class and you've got like a massive folder that's got like a hundred sheets in it. It's just not practical, it's probably going to fall off the piano and it's just not great. I don't want to be flicking through like millions of different pages to, to get what I want. So the aim is to keep it tidy, keep it clean and to keep the music in it that you're actually using at this moment in time. So number two, it's the ring binder, the four ring ring binder. Ring binders are just fantastic for music. And these would be my favourite type of folders to use as rep folders because they're just big enough so that you can get everything in but they're not going to bulk up so much that you can't stand up on the piano or anything like that. So I've got two versions to show you. I've got your sort of bog standard basic one that a lot of drama school students get. If you want to splash the cash a bit and get one of these from Staples, then do that. This is my favourite one. So, it's just basically, it does what it says on the tin. It's white, you can get it in loads of different colours. Um, you can get it from Staples, but again, you're better off getting it from Amazon or something like that. Four rings, which means that you're not going to end up with the music flopping about everywhere. Because often in a two-ring binder, and I always say to my students, I've got a bit of a phobia about two-ring binders. If the music's just hung there in the middle, it can fall about a bit. So the four rings help to keep it really, really secure. Um, and you might think that you need a special hole punch for this, but you don't. You can do it with a normal hole punch, and um, I'll show you how to do that in a minute as well. Okay, so the super duper version of that is this folder. So it's a Staples Better Binder. They are about eight quid now, and they come in loads and loads of different colours. I use them for everything. Now, the super feature of this, apart from it being really sturdy and brilliant because it's plastic, it's um, trimmed in rubber which means that actually it stops itself falling off the piano. For the price conscious student out there, they usually come in like a pack of 10 to 15 on Amazon, you can get them. If you all get together and decide to order a box, you can all share the cost and make it really cheap and get it for as little as about a quid or two quid a folder, which is fantastic. So the last type of folder is the one that I actually kept my own rep in, and um, it's this um, ring bound plastic presentation wallet with an elastic band on it. Um, these are great to play from, they're great to have as rep folders for a couple of reasons. Um, the first being it's not too big, so you can get your sheet music in there without it being really bulky and falling off the piano. Now opening it up, what you'll notice is there's not as much glare from the light. Um, I am holding it directly in front of the light actually, and there's a little bit of glare, but not like the other folder before. I've um, given you some really good ideas about different types of folders that you can use. Um, but if you don't want to keep your music in a folder like that and you would like to tape everything, um, then I'm going to show you how to do that next. 
So the only things that you're gonna need for this are a piece of sheet music and some sellotape. Okay, two things to remember when you sellotape and your sheet music. The first thing is don't sellotape down the front. If you do put a piece of sellotape down the front, it just makes the sheet music want to go like that basically and has a more of a tendency to just fall off the piano. So what you actually do is to sellotape down the back, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. Now the last thing to remember when you sellotape in your sheet music is to make sure that you just put one single piece pretty much from the top to the bottom because it means that it's got all that support all the way down. Yes, I'm really sad. Yes, I've looked into this and this is the best way of doing it. Don't just put a piece across there, piece across there, piece across there on the front or the back because it just makes it dead flimsy. So this is how to sellotape your sheet music the best way. Take your first two pieces like this. And what you're going to do is flip them over so that the top of the page is facing you so it's sort of upside down like that yeah you do the same with your next one and put it next to it on the right side like that you then take a piece of sellotape like this make sure that your pages are touching a little bit and you go from whichever end you want hold it down and just place it there and then smooth it out again it doesn't have to be perfect so what you've got is a nice piece of tape going from the top to the bottom which supports it from behind which means that it can stand up on the piano really nicely so it's not just about it being structurally um, beneficial for the sheet music on the piano but when you stick the piece of sellotape on the back like that it means you're free to write all over it if you need to do an arrow from this bar to this bar for example if you're doing some cuts then it means you're not gonna have that piece of plastic in the way to stop the pen going over it and then what you do is you move it on a little bit you get your next page like this same thing again you're gonna go from the bottom here hold it down and stick it down like that smush it down and then you concertina it so what I tend to do is when I've got three I move the first page over and fold it down so I've always got two and then what you end up with is a nice piece of sheet music like that that I can pop down on the piano and I can just turn the page like it's a little book and I can write all over it and it's going to stand up and support itself really well on the piano because you've sellotaped it all the way down on the back. That is the definitive way to sellotape your sheet music for auditions or for classes. So next I'm going to show you how to use a normal two hole punch for a four ring binder. Um, again, don't think you've got to put loads of plastic wallets in it which can be expensive, you absolutely don't. Um, you don't need to buy a four hole puncher, um, you can get them, they're really expensive. Just get a normal one like this. Did you know that on these hole punchers there is an actual setting for four holes? So this guide that we all use when we want to get A4, you pull it out like this, A5, and then A4 is there. And I know that if I put that in there, it's going to give me two holes. But you can pull that out, and it's got lots of different settings on it. So it's got an A4, an A5, a full 3x8, an A6, and a 3x8. And it's this bottom 3x8 you need to look at. On um, most hole punches, actually, it will say 888, so it'll just have triple eight instead of 3x8, but that's the, the sort of shortest setting, and that's what you need. So you pop it back, and you go all the way down until you have reached the just above the triple eight section there. You can just about see. I'm going to take the bottom, and I'm going to hole punch it there. So I've got two holes there, and then what I do is I flip it over like that, and put it in the same place so it's just at that short bit there and the new music is punched for a four ring binder and it's perfectly spaced like that so i hope that was helpful in some way um i've seen it so many times that um students will sellotape the music the wrong way around so that instead of going from left to right across the piano it goes the opposite way so you're reading backwards and that's obviously really annoying if you've spent all that time preparing for a class and you teach a saying bring in a piece of music um, make sure it's taped or in a folder or whatever and you think right I'm gonna tape or I'm gonna be really organized and then you get in so many times and the students not checked and I've looked and I've gone right well I am, how am I gonna play that backwards you know so it really pays just to spend a bit of time and do it properly also it's really cool about the hole puncher as well but I think I just googled it actually and um, you don't need to rush out and buy anything expensive or try and go around the college and look for a four hole punch often students are fighting over them and there's always like one or two maybe in the department and they're like oh so and so's got it or I don't know where it is just get a normal one you can get one for about a quid from like Wilkinson's or like the pound shop and uh, it works just as well Okay, so my next video is going to be about um, how to cut sheet music for auditions and for classes as well. Um, specifically aimed at drama school auditionees, 
One thing that I always find is I supervise my students maybe a bit too much in their um, sheet music organisation and preparation and I'm actually quite known for my uh, sheet music presentation. So I'll take you through how I present the score for the pianist. Again it's all about being really clear, it's all about making sure everything's marked but not bombarding it with highlighter and text and stuff. So I'll take you through how to do that in the next video. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.